winning the Fleming Prize was just amazing. I mean, it was, I think it's the best prize I've ever been awarded. You know, it's the very first prize really that I've won as an independent scientist. It was validation really for my own ideas and my research. You know, the first piece of independent research I'd done and to get the Fleming Prize for that was just amazing. When I won the prize, it was probably the proudest moment of my life. Um, because really I was following the footsteps of some, some what you might call giants in the microbiological world. Um, and, uh, you know, really some, some living legends, you know, people who I really respected. And then suddenly I was part of that, that, that collective, those people have won the, the, the Fleming Prize. And um, of course it's named after one of the greatest microbiologists that, 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 that ever lived. And, and it gives you confidence and it gives you the confidence to reach out to to others and, 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 and form new collaborations and ask others to help you uh, maybe investigate the challenges that you, that you set yourself. It really is a privilege to, to get the award, um, but it's, it's also been really nice to come to the conference. Um, I haven't been to the conference for probably more than 10 years uh, because I usually have teaching this time of year, um, but I used to come almost every year when I was a PhD student and a postdoc in the UK, so it's really nice to come back um, and sort of engage again with the society a bit more. It's there at the top of my CV, it's, it's a real badge of honour and I have to say I'm so proud because the work, the work that um, I was jointly awarded the prize for, a lot of people thought actually the tax system couldn't exist and wouldn't exist and I think it hampered discovery for a long time when people just said well it's impossible, bacteria can't possibly do that, therefore the system doesn't exist and so for me and, and my, my collaborator to actually be a part of discovering that and describing that and being awarded the Fleming Medal for that is just fantastic. What we did was really a true team effort. You know, we, we worked together, we, we both conceived this idea, we worked together towards answering the question. Um, and I think it would have been unfair for one or other of us to be singled out when what we contributed together was so much more than what we could have done individually. I wrote, a, wrote my lecture up as an article and I wanted to sort of set a number of challenges for the future in the field and lots of uh, laboratories all around the world have picked up on those challenges so my lecture has spawned really hundreds of pieces of work around the world and in fact even two decades later it's still cited 50 times a year so you know it's it's lasted as well it's, it's made a lasting impact. For me I mean I guess it comes back to the people as well because I've, I've had so many great people come through the lab I think I was trying to count recently how many people I've worked with in my lab over the last 10 years and it's been at least 50 different students and staff and things so I think it's sort of a really nice recognition of all the work that they've done. I mean I sit in my office mostly these days so um, I think they're really doing all the hard work. Since I won the award I've gone on to take up leadership positions in my university. I'm currently the Vice-Chancellor. That might not have happened had I not been given the confidence that the award gave me. But even as Vice-Chancellor, I continue to be part of a research group and continue to be excited by research and wanting to continue to push the boundaries. I wish I'd known it would get easier for women in science. Um, when I won the prize, I was pregnant with my second child. And my husband, who'd actually contributed to some of the work that won me the prize, was at home with our young son. And I really wish he could have come to hear my presentation um, but he couldn't because there were no childcare facilities in those days and actually it's great to see the society taking a lead in providing creche facilities at conferences for example and so I know if I won now he could come and the, the, our son would be looked after but at the time it just wasn't possible and I guess I'm disappointed that it's taken so long for that to happen but happy that it's happening now. When I won the Fleming Prize, I wish I'd known not to worry about being consistent because, as Oscar Wilde once famously said, consistency is the last refuge of the unimaginative. If you, if you hang on too much to ideas, you won't progress. And I, when I was younger, people would say, well, that's not a very consistent argument. And I used to worry about that. So be imaginative and be inconsistent and then you'll make progress. <laughs>